since its original release in 1992, Candyman has been an iconic horror movie and an iconic horror movie villain. The rich, gothic tale of an urban legend brought to life by chanting his name five times has haunted audiences for decades. And the original film is an atmospheric tale of racial divide and horror set against the backdrop of 90s Chicago with an emphasis on the urban setting of Cabrini Green, a lower income housing project left to the black community after an attempt at gentrification with its residents struggling on a daily basis to rise above their circumstances. The original film centers on Helen Lyle, a graduate student investigating urban legends for her thesis, who stumbles across the Candyman legend in her studies and ends up summoning the man himself. While the film does attempt to tackle serious issues such as gentrification, racial discrimination, and the way law enforcement treats the black community, at the end of the day, it is a story told through the eyes of a white lead and with a white director at the helm. And no matter how well-intentioned the story is, it can't truly tell the story of a black community with a white protagonist, especially since the end of the movie ends up playing into the much maligned white savior trope. This is where Nia DaCosta's reimagining of the gothic horror story shines. While DaCosta's direction is sharp and impactful, it's in the co-written script that we see her and her co-writers reclaim the movie for the black community, offering up well-written and nuanced black characters placed within a new racially themed spin on the terrifying legend from the first film. We start the film with our new protagonists, artist Anthony and his girlfriend Brianna, inviting Brianna's brother and his boyfriend over for dinner. Straight away, the strength of these characters come through as they escape stereotypes and are presented as real people with their own dreams, aspirations, personalities, weaknesses, and strengths. While the original film did feature black characters, aside from the titular villain, they were woefully underdeveloped and mostly present to support the white protagonist's storyline. Anne-Marie, played by the ageless Vanessa Williams, is a single black mother struggling to make ends meet in the crumbling Cabrini Green housing. While her story, in and of itself, is compelling enough, she is mostly used for exposition and hysteria, as her baby is stolen by Candyman and used so Helen can play white saviour by rescuing said baby from the villain. While it makes for an emotional and intense ending, it does the character of Anne-Marie dirty and emphasises the idea that black characters are simply there to serve white characters' stories without voices of their own. The black best friend of protagonist Helen fares even worse. Played by Casey Lemons, and ironically mirroring the same role she filled for Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs, Lemons' character Bernadette is, in theory, the co-author of the thesis that Helen is writing, but she ends up existing mostly to act as a foil for Helen. Bernadette opts for caution in their investigation of Cabrini Green, and this caution is meant to offset Helen's eagerness and showcase how bold and brave Helen is by comparison. With barely any dialogue and most of her scenes involving her aiding Helen with no real purpose of her own, Bernadette becomes one of Candyman's victims in his rampage to get to Helen and is killed off in a fairly horrifying manner before we barely get to know her. By contrast, DaCosta's main characters are a young black couple and each is given rich characterization with personal arcs that play out over the course of the film. Our protagonist is Anthony, a frustrated artist living with his supportive girlfriend and struggling with a bad case of artist block at the beginning of the film. Anthony is an endearing and intriguing character, and there are subtle hints dropped about his struggle as a black artist in an art world which is dominated by white privilege especially as he starts to draw inspiration from the now gentrified Cabrini Green and the legend of Candyman. Through Anthony's struggle to find his inspiration, we receive the new legend of Candyman and see how the figure himself has grown into a prominent urban legend in the black community, becoming both a symbol of oppression and of twisted justice. We discover how the legend has grown, from Daniel Robitaille's initial horrific lynching and ghostly vengeance, to encompass the many, many black men brought down by police brutality and systemic racism, 
and DaCosta's co-written script illustrates the struggle of the black community to be heard and treated fairly. Anthony's descent into the nightmare of Candyman's legend is portrayed with thought and care and carefully sidesteps any stereotypes and instead treats Anthony's spiral in a sympathetic and human light. We really get to see the young artist struggle, the way the central figure of the movie slowly takes over him and his eventual horrific discovery that he is the very same baby from the original film, kidnapped by Candyman himself and almost sacrificed. Trying her hardest not to follow Anthony into madness is his partner Brianna, who gets her own small story arc and solid characterization. She is revealed to be an art gallery dealer, and it's implied that she and Anthony met through this world. Brianna is smart and tough and highly ambitious, and none of her more dominant traits are ever seen as a negative, nor does she play into any sassy black or angry black woman tropes. We discover that her support for Anthony and her initial desire to stand by him through his breakdown is linked to the traumatic suicide of her artist father, and that she sees her father and his plight in Anthony, adding an extra layer to her character and providing reasons for her actions. While Brianna is shown to be supportive of her partner and their relationship is initially portrayed in a very healthy and warm light, as Anthony's descent into madness starts to spill into their private lives, Brianna is given agency and autonomy and stands her ground when Anthony's behavior becomes full of red flags. When the slow possession which is overtaking Anthony turns him violent, Brianna immediately packs her things and leaves. A great message to send every woman watching and another subversion when it comes to the portrayal of black women and the way society views violence within the black community. Brianna is allowed to be strong, layered, frightened, complex, and likable, and her character essentially ends up being pivotal to the film and the overall legend of Candyman, because Brianna is the first person in the film, and really across all the movies, to truly weaponize Candyman, and it is through this weaponization that the film turns a legend on its head and reclaims the character for the black community. While certainly an iconic horror movie villain, Candyman has always been surrounded with at least mild controversy, starting from the conception of the original film script. When the character, who is white in the original short story that the film is based on, was reimagined as a black man, concerns of racial stereotyping arose. It was a risky move, and directed Bernard Rose ended up seeking approval from the NAACP to keep the character black. Rose was granted approval, and the villain we received in the original movie was well received by both black and white audiences alike. Being played by the wonderfully talented and physically beautiful Tony Todd absolutely helped when it came to this, but the original film also treats its villain sympathetically and sheds light on his horrifying death and the racial discrimination that he endured. However, despite Candyman's sympathetic portrayal and past full of racially motivated violence, as previously stated, the original film is still told from a white perspective and through the eyes of white protagonist Helen, who saves the day in a very white saviour manner, dying to save a black baby and, implied by extension, an entire black community. While the legend of Candyman is obviously still prevalent in the new film, Helen herself has also become a legend, a development which is hinted at in the final scene of the original film when her husband accidentally invokes her spirit by repeating her name five times. The new film runs with this concept, and far from being the tortured hero she's portrayed as in the original film, Helen has become a monster who preyed upon Cabrini Green. Her tale turned into one of murder and madness. It's a wonderfully funny way to poke fun at the white savior angle present in the original, while also playing into the urban legend aspect that the entire first film was built upon. While Helen has become a monster preying on the innocent, Candyman himself has become something of a bigger legend, moving from merely a violent ghost to an entire hive of oppressed and violently murdered black men who rise up to claim justice against those who have wronged them. Candyman has become a symbol for the black community, 
And as the film barrels towards its violent climax, we see how Anthony's descent into Candyman's darkness has been planned from the beginning, with one of the disillusioned residents from Cabrini Green deciding to turn him into the new Candyman to act as a symbol for the injustice done to the black community. He wants to weaponize Candyman to turn him from a white urban legend into a voice for all the lost black men, to turn the monster back into a man. And therein lies the paradox that has always been at the heart of his character and which DaCosta's film tries to explore and explain. That, even though Candyman is a villain and to a white audience he means nothing but death and destruction, to a black audience he is a very different character. Yes, he is a murderer and a horrific figure conjured through supernatural means, but he is also a victim of tragic circumstances, and he represents the very real violence, prejudice, and horror that black people still face to this day. So, when Brianna conjures him in the final moments of the film, and he wipes out an entire squad of brutal and corrupt policemen, we feel the shift in legend and see how Nia DaCosta has reclaimed the character and the film. His final chilling words Tell everyone. lets the audience know that the legend has changed, that through DaCosta's co-written script and beautiful direction, she has reclaimed Candyman, brought him back to his true roots, and given the black community an enigmatic figure to hold onto and truly claim as their own.